Hallelujah. God is a good God. Is God a good God? Amen. Amen. Are you glad to be in the land of the living this evening? Those people who are glad that there's a gadong, gadong, gadong beating in their heart. Let me see your hands. You're alive and you're well. Amen. The Bible declares a join to the living. There is hope. Amen. Lots of people went to their beds last night and did not have the opportunity to see today. But you have found yourselves in the land of the living. So there's a blessing attached to that. Amen. Let's just bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks and we want to give you praise God for today. Father, we are still convinced that today is the day that you have made and we will make a decision to rejoice and to be glad in it. Father, we are so thankful for the opportunity to come into your house, O God. Even as David said that he was glad when they said unto him, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Father, we have come this evening and even as we have enjoyed ourselves during praise and worship, even as we have lifted our hands and just blessed your name, O God. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, God, to chew a little bit on your word. Father, we pray that even as your word goes forth father god it will make an indentation into the heart and into the minds of your people that a head would be lifted a heart would be encouraged and a life will be turned around for good father we give you thanks and we give you praise for doing it in Jesus' name amen and amen do me a favor look to the person at your side and let them know that you're glad that they're in church tonight amen look to the person on the other side say i'm glad that you're in church tonight amen hallelujah and you may have your seats amen god is a good god is god a good god amen amen i came in and i looked across on the keyboard and i saw mr mark isaac pleasant good evening sir so glad to have you amen for those of us that listen to 98 sorry 107.1 amen he is one of the presenters good so so this is our month of productivity could i see the hands of the people in your room who are making a conscious decision to be more productive not just in this month but in this year because it's not about this is not my day and this is not my week but this is my decade tell your neighbor slap your chest and neighbor this is my decade there's not there's not my day and there's not my week this is my decade and i'm gonna make a decision to ensure that this is my decade amen Bishop was just sharing and he was sharing about the fact that we need to understand that we are more than conquerors. Amen. You need to get up on a morning and look yourself in the mirror and make a declaration that I am more than a conqueror. How many times do you feel not like a conqueror? If you're honest with yourself, the feelings that come upon you sometimes, sometimes wants to convince you that you are not a conqueror. But that's why we are so thankful that we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith. So this is not about how I feel. Because if I used to walk by how I feel, my walk would be a kind of crooked walk sometimes. Amen. My walk would be a bit of a, a little stressful walk sometimes. When somebody mash my corner, I, I, I load them up. But thank God for Jesus. Amen, somebody. Thank God for whom? Thank God for Jesus that I could make a decision every single day to live a conquering Christian life. Why? Because I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. Amen. And this is our month of productivity. And I'm so thankful that as a ministry, we put focus on different things throughout the month. And it's not so much that when the month is finished, the topic is finished, but it just brings it into focus. Because I don't know about you, but there is always opportunity in my life to become more productive. Amen, somebody? So we are so thankful to bring certain things out. And tonight I'm going to touch on a couple of areas that I think are very important, even as we get into the topic of productivity. Could we ask just the technical room to put up the same scripture for the month? By now we should know it by heart. Amen. It is taken from Genesis 1 and 11. And I wanted to highlight a couple of things about it. Let's read it in concert, if you would. And it says, And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. So a couple of things I want to highlight here. First and foremost, the Bible says, and God said. Who said it? God, the creator of the entire universe. I had the opportunity to share uh, on the Nuggets program this week, and, and I, I took the opportunity to present to people the cv of god how many of us know that god has a weighty cv his curriculum vitae is weighty do, do, do we agree with that 
I thank God for your CV. Some people have uh, a, a five passes. Some people have a ten. Some people have a twenty. Some people have a first degree. Some people have a second degree. Some people have a third degree. Some people have more degrees than a thermometer. But Father God has a weighty, weighty, weighty CV. Amen, somebody. So, as we understand who he is, we understand that it is God who is saying this. And once God says it, that settles it. Amen, somebody. So, once God says it, it settles it. So, he says, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. When I was going through this particular scripture, I had to ask myself, Jared, are you sure that the produce that you are producing is... It, it, it is well, after this kind is one, but is it something that you are sure that you want to reproduce? The thing that you are producing, because there's one thing to produce, and it's something entirely different to reproduce. So are you sure that what you are producing is, is good enough to be reproduced? Somebody asked somebody a question once. Would you follow you? If you had the ability to follow you, would you follow you? And I, I would like to think that the, the answer to that question is yes. But sometimes if we are brutally honest with ourselves, sometimes we, we kind of bounce our toe a little bit. Sometimes we are pulled off course a little bit. Sometimes we just do some shepherdness. Oh, I didn't say nothing. Yeah. Sometimes we just do some shepherdness. Amen. And, and sometimes you, you, you constantly have to be asking yourself the question, will, will you follow you? If you had the ability to follow yourself, would you do it wholeheartedly? Because why? That person is leading well. I thank God so much for his grace because his grace could pick us up when we make mistakes sometimes. But consistently put yourself in that place to answer that question. And thank God for his grace to be able to carry you through. So it said, listen, fruit yielding tree, yielding fruit, sorry, after his kind, whose seed is in itself. And that particular verse of scripture just shouts something to me. It says to me, Jared, every single thing that you want to achieve on the face of this earth, within yourself, you have the capacity to get it done. Do you believe that tonight? Every single thing that you want to achieve on the face of this earth, you have the capacity within yourself to get it done by the grace of God. Because Father God himself has done it. Because this verse of scripture in Genesis 1.11 echoes down what is said in Genesis 1.28. Again, a very popular verse of scripture. So let's look at Genesis 1.28. And God blessed them. In other words, God empowered them to prosper. In other words, God ensured that everything that they needed to make it was put in them. Look to anywhere right square in the eye. In the koro koro eye. And say neighbor. They in here. They in here. Say neighbor. Everything you need to make it. Is on your inside. I, I, I don't care what it is. Is it a relational thing? Everything you need to make it is on your inside. Is it a social thing? Is it an occupational thing? Is it an academic thing? Everything you need to make it is on your inside amen and god blessed them amen and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply so if it is you're looking around your life on a daily basis and you find that you're not seeing the fruit that you are really supposed to produce then something probably is not where it should be and god probably has to work some stuff out based on what he has already worked in amen somebody so be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. So you see that that be fruitful and multiply. If it is you translate it back to Genesis 1 and 11, it can be equated to us understanding that within yourself there is seed that can produce fruit. Amen, somebody. So what do you need? What have you been losing sleep about? What have you been up restlessly in the night? thinking and tossing and turning and wetting your pillow with anxious sleep about. I have good news for you. Every single thing you need to make that thing happen is on your inside. Amen, somebody. And all God needs from you to do is to just rely on him in faith. Don't come to him crying. Don't come to him complaining. Don't go to your neighbor grumbling. Come to him and say, Father God, I understand that within me there is everything I need to make it. So let we go. So let we go. Amen, somebody. Oh, look at me with that tuna voice. So let we go. 
Amen. Because, because this is not about stagnancy. Amen, somebody. This is our year of divine fruitfulness. Are you seeing the fruit? So, so Mark, some people would have started the year, right? And they would have started the year with some degree of, you know, some people start with New Year's resolutions. And some people start with New Year's revolutions. Whatever you would have started your year with, some people would have put things in front of them that they wanted to accomplish. And we are at the ninth month of the calendar year. And some people may have seen some things, and some people may not have seen some things. And you can be tempted to become a little bit frustrated. True or false? Because within yourself, you believe that this thing is not happening the way you want it to happen, when you want it to happen, how you want it to happen. Amen. And you begin to put God on your timetable. And say, Father God, I ain't, I ain't seeing what I'm supposed to be seeing. I ain't seeing the fruit that should be happening. Not understanding that God is working something differently out for you. But because you want this thing on your own timetable, you want to push him. Say, Father, I'm patient. But hurry up and do quick now. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, so, so we, have, we, have, we are called to be fruitful. The Bible says be fruitful and multiply. Replenish. That talks about reproducing after its own kind replenish earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish and the, the, the fowl and, the, 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 and, and as bishop will say over every creep right over every creeping thing on the earth so basically we have been called to have dominion true or false somebody true or false somebody but sometimes life be, beats us up if we allow it amen but we need to ensure that every single day we live, we live as more than conquerors. And in this month of productivity, you need to make up your mind. Because I, as I tell people all the time, there is nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. You could, uh, we, we were showing something to the youth a couple of weeks ago. Listen to me. You could change your clothes. You could change your address. You could change your job. You could change your spouse. But if you don't change your mind, you ain't going a place. Look to your neighbor, square and say, neighbor, you need to change your mind. You want stuff to change in your life, you need to change your mind. You want to be a bit more productive, you need to change your mind. Because as I mentioned to them, you don't get out of life what you want because lots of people want stuff. You get out of life who you are. Amen, somebody. So the, the you that was in 2014 and the you that was in 2013, if it is you haven't gotten what you wanted in 2013 and 2014, and you're doing the same things in 2015, what makes you believe that is going to happen? Amen, somebody. If it is you want to get stuff, you, if it is you want to get stuff you have never had, you need to be somebody that you have never been. Amen. So, just kind of bringing the focus into productivity. Oftentimes, when the Bible talks about productivity, it makes a parallel to trees and to plants and to fruit and to that kind of thing. So, I mean, on a couple of occasions, when we, we look across the Bible, we see instances where Jesus was talking. And he was talking in, in one particular place in Matthew 25 about the parable of the talents. And so serious does he view productivity we all know the story the guy who got five and the guy who got two and the guy who got one and the guy who got five brought back five and the guy who got two brought back two and the guy who had one went and hide it and the indictment to him was you lazy and slothful servant and because of that what happened the bible says what he had was taken from him and he was banished and that speaks squarely to productivity so god has given you something if it is your stop and for a second Take an introspective look within yourself. What has God blessed you with? And have you been maximizing the potential of it? If you're really honest with yourself, and some people tend to look down on their giftings and look down on their talents and say, well, with this, where is this? And somebody with less talent and less giftings than you, doing 200% more. Why? Because they understand that what they have is tremendous and if they choose to trust god they understand as well that little is much in the hand of the master so to you it might look like a ming pilling thing but put it in god's hand and trust them with it and have a diligent heart and have a hard working mentality god will turn little into much once you choose to be faithful say amen somebody but we have other people who Make a decision to be lazy. Listen, the, the book of Proverbs is littered with things that happen to lazy people. Amen. Look to anybody, don't be lazy, you know. 
Because if it is you're lazy and you're consistently lazy, when you're coming up this street, I go cross. Oh, you ain't telling them that bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but, but the Bible talks about it. Just, just imagine the Bible makes reference to a man who is in his house. He's so lazy. He ain't want to leave his house. And somebody telling him to leave his house. And he said, to, to leave your house and go and look for opportunity. He said, No, no, no. I have lions outside. I can't go outside right now. Things, things outside might, might be in my favor. I can't go outside. It have lions outside. Listen, you cannot afford to be lazy. And some people use this laziness as, as a mask and as a cover for Christianity. Well, you know, well, bless the Lord. Father God is going to work it out. You know, I am, I am trusting God. You know, day by day, you know, he, he's going to make things happen in Jesus' name. You know, I'm, 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 I'm trusting him to bring things to fruition in Jesus' name. Lazy! No, no, thank God for God. Amen, somebody. And thank God for his word. Amen, somebody. But once you make a decision not to get up and get, not to put your hands to the plow, the Bible says, he that finds... You have stuff to do, right? You have what? Stuff to do. But you're doing it any kind of how. Or you ain't doing it at all. But you want to be blessed. Say, so, but God, what is really going on? But God, I thought, you, I thought you were opening this door. But God, I thought things are happening. I thought things are supposed to be happening. But lazy. And you, you, you know what has happened? They say enthusiasm contagious, right? You know laziness contagious too? Yeah. So them same lazy people wanna come and say, oh, girl, we're going to be yourself now, girl, we're going to watch a little movie. Broken to break up, more movie you're going and watch. <laughs> Amen. Find something productive to do in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I, I don't know about you, but I am serving God not just to get by. It is one thing to exist. It's something entirely different to excel. Say amen, somebody. It is one thing to survive. It's something entirely different to thrive. Say amen, somebody. And you need to make a decision to thrive. You need to understand that the God that you're serving is the monarch of the entire universe. But he's depending on you to get up and get. Say amen, somebody. And everybody that sit down and does the same. You know, I could go and do this thing, you know, but. You know, I could go and do that thing, you know, but. You know, if this thing happens so and so and so, I'll be able to do it, you know. But, listen, when you say but, you're arguing for your limitations. And like I tell people all the time, a but is the most fleshly part of your whole being. <laughs> and when you're relying on your but, you're relying on the armor of flesh. So stop saying but. Say, I am going to do this thing in Jesus' name. I'm going to get that degree in Jesus' name. I'm going to have a better relationship with God in Jesus' name. Family restoration is coming my way in Jesus' name. People, well, so, so we, we want, well, I want to try and make it happen. We, how, we want, I want to try and make it happen. Brother, let me borrow for a second. Let me borrow for a second. Man, say, how this man calling me this Saturday night, but I don't know what is really going on here. Right. So this is that chair. Amen. Amen. Good. Try and push that chair. He try and push that chair. What do you do? He push it. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. So it's one thing to try and do something, but it's something entirely different to, to actually do it. Amen. So people, well, you know, are trying to do this and are trying to do that. Hey, you serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What try talk you coming around me with? Amen. I am convinced. I am fully persuaded that the things that I have entrusted unto God, he is well able to perform in Jesus' name. Amen. So you need to make a decision. This kind of, well, you know, it will happen. You know, I, 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 take in, I take in time, you know, every, every day, you know. And two years from now, I come back and I'm talking to you. Well, you know, I trust in the Lord, you know. You know, things. Same place, you know. Same place. Listen. Do you know? That one of the easiest people to lie to is yourself. You just wrap your mind around it and say, well, you know, this thing will happen. You know when, you know, when God has some time, this thing, this thing will happen. Hello. You need to be brutally, if there's one person we need to try to be brutally honest with you with, is yourself. And look yourself in the mirror and say, see this dotishness? This same thing year after year, after year after year. When is this thing going to change? Look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. They ain't here. They ain't here. Say, neighbor. If you want to change your life, 
You need to change your mind. You need to change your mind. You want to change your life. You need to change your mind. Because the Bible and God is very serious about fruit. And he's very serious about productivity. Amen, somebody. Do me a favor. Turn very quickly to the book of John chapter 15 and verses 16. Very popular verse of scripture. But I want to pull one thing out of it. John 15 and 16. It says, ye have not chosen me. But I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. Tell the neighbor fruit. And that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. What have we been ordained to do? To go and bring forth fruit. Listen, it's all about fruit. My life is about fruit. And fruit could manifest itself in my job. Fruit could manifest itself in my home. Fruit could manifest itself in church. Once you are bearing fruit, you are bringing pleasure to Father God. Our job description as believers is to bear fruit. Amen, somebody. Do me a favor as well. Turn to Luke chapter 16, verses 6. Sorry, Luke chapter 13, verses 6 to 9. Luke 13, verses 6 to 9. And it says this. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. 7. Then he said unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumber it in it the ground? See this cage if you think I was. And verse 8 says, And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung. Dung it, right? Uh, verse 9. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, I shall cut it down. I want to put some focus back on verse 7. Verse 7 says, So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Listen, life is about fruit. And we need to understand that Father God is holding us accountable. What fruit are you bearing? Whose life is better because of you? I mentioned in uh, Mommy Gemma's funeral that every single one of us here, and if it is you go into the cemetery right now, any cemetery, upon the epitaph of people, you will see their names. And you will see the day that they were born, and you will see the day that they died. And in between the day that they were born, and in between the day that they, were, they died, there's a dash. And that dash represents your life. What are you going to do with that dash? Is somebody's life going to be better because of your dash? Is somebody's life going to be improved because of your dash? Are your children going to be better because of your dash? Is your finances and your career and your neighborhood and your workplace going to be better because of your dash? I don't know about you, but I want to have a dash of significance. Amen, somebody. Look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you want to have a dash of significance. So, so very, very important. We need to have a dash of significance. So I, I just want to highlight six things this evening. C could I highlight, highlight six things? I want to highlight six things very quickly that I believe very important to us living productive lives. So, if it is you ain't writing plenty, just write these six. Amen. If you ain't writing plenty, write how much? Write these six. So, the first one, the first one is tilled soil. You want to live a productive life, you need to have tilled soil. Proverbs 28 and 19. Let's turn there quickly. Proverbs 28 and 19. We need to have tw tilled soil. So I, I said I was going to keep it along the lines of agriculture. Tilled soil. It says this. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. But he that followeth after vain persons 
shall have poverty enough. This particular translation says vain persons. One translation says frivolous and empty pursuits. That person that goes after those pie in the sky kind of things, those things that will tend to not happen. You see, that person that is caught up with fantasies is wanting to be a dreamer. Being a dreamer is okay. But guess what? You need to wake up and work on your dream. Say amen, somebody. So he that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. But he that follow after vain pursuits or persons in this regard shall have poverty enough. Just imagine that, right? Do you imagine that there's a poverty that is not enough? You know some people have a poverty that is not enough? Some people will, you will have poverty enough. You, you know when people have poverty that is not enough? You see when you're still getting by? So I was talking to somebody, I was talking to somebody last week. I was in South working, right? And um, this guy home, I talk about able-bodied man. The man strong, strapped, and he home. And I talking to one of the persons in the household. And they say, well, yeah, that is my uncle. My aunt has gave me about $1,500 a month. And my next aunt has gave me about $1,500 a month. I say, what I need to do is to come in that house and hit your aunt a clout. And hit your next aunt a clout. And then find the, 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 your uncle and hug him up because he had to be doing something good. The man ain't doing nothing. Staying home and scratching. So for him, guess what? The $3,000 mightn't be all that he need, but it's not poverty enough. You know when he'll wake up and get? When the aunt tell him, brother, it's either you suck seed or you suck salt. So get up and get. Right? So when one aunt tell him that, and the next aunt tell him that, he will come to a place of poverty. That is enough. And he will raise up and say, boy, Things little tight inside of here. Flour more than water, or water more than flour. I don't want to find something to do. Amen. So the Bible says, He that tilleth his land. In other words, it talks about a breaking up of the land. If it is you want, and those people that in agriculture will understand that if it is you have soil and you really want to give the seed the best opportunity to grow, you need to till up, you need to till up the ground. And that tilling up talks about making it a, a, a environment that can produce fruit you know what is an environment that could produce fruit an environment that you are consistently exposing to the elements that will cause growth to take place i'll touch on a couple elements just now but tilling also gives you the, you the opportunity to break up the soil you know when you break up the soil what has happened the root has the opportunity to go a little deeper amen somebody that's why the bible says that it is the engrafted word of god that is able to save your soul you know why is the engrafted word of god the engrafted word of god is the word that gets down into your system and sticks it is only that word that has the capacity to change your life oftentimes listen people come inside of here on a sunday morning not in this house right in the in in next place not in this place right people would come in our auditorium pack it full listen to the word Come out. Say, that, was a good, that was a good word. Oh my. That was a good word. Uh -huh. What did the pastor talk about? Um, well, you know, well, he was preaching. Uh, you know, he, he was preaching, you know, and he was excited. I mean, he was, you know, he had the place bouncing, right? But, you know, um, yeah, what, what did the pastor talk about? Well, hmm, hey, this thing is not about a carnival band. This thing is not about coming here and saying, woo, honey, and woo. This thing is not about them kind of gymnastics. This thing is about you making a decision. To, I, listen, you don't, you, don't need, you don't have to get the 40 minutes of this message. You know what you need to get? Probably just one snippet out of this message that you're going to hold on to. And you say, God, you see this? I'm going to cause this to bring change. Psychologists have proven... That when people want to bring about change in their life, it's not about the huge, big, large changes that come that's going to cause it to change. You know what it is? It's the incremental things that you do on a consistent basis. So if you get nothing, make a decision to take one thing from this word and say, God, you see this one thing? I want this thing to come into my spirit and stick because it is this one thing that could change my life. Other than that, you know what happened? 
You come to church tonight? Hey, Pastor, you're here. Hey, Bishop, all right, all right, okay, I was here. And you tell God, check, press on God. I was in church tonight. So, send my blessing away, right? Send my blessing, right? And you want it now. So, so this is not about roll call. Tell anybody, say neighbor. This is not about roll call. But this is about the word that's going to change your life. So, in order for that word to get down and take root, your grung had to be till. Tell anybody again. Say neighbor, till the grung. They ain't here. They ain't here. Say neighbor, till the grung. Neighbor, till the grung. You need to tell the ground. Because if it is you don't tell the ground and allow the word to go down, guess what, what is going to happen? You're going to have poverty enough. Poverty what? Enough. Second one, very quickly. Tell anybody, plant the seed. You need to plant the seed. So, so you're trusting God for some things, right? You're trusting God for things to happen. Decision to allow the word of God to go down and be planted. But... You know, I was, I was looking at the whole of faith recently. And my, my, my mind and my eyes just fell on Hebrews 11.11. 11. Let's turn there quickly. Hebrews 11.11. 11. My, my eyes just fell on it. And it, it, it brought back some stuff to memory. Hebrews 11.11. 11. This is what it says. It says, through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive. Tell your neighbor, strength to conceive. So through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Tell your neighbor, God is faithful. Don't stress yourself, neighbor. God is faithful. But the, the focus I want to put on this thing very quickly is that of Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. So you want to go somewhere this year? You want to change your life this year? You want things to be different in your situation this year? You need to have strength to conceive seed. You know, I would, I would have thought in natural thinking that Sarah at 90 years old probably needed strength to deliver. I mean, the woman is 90. You know, you would think, I mean, I'm not a, a midwife by any stretch of the imagination. Right? But you would think that the one thing that she would need is the strength to deliver this child. But the Bible says that she needed strength to conceive seed. And that spoke something to me. In other words, in, in order for me to get where God is carrying me, I need to have the strength to conceive that seed. Because it is at conception that my seed is most vulnerable. In other words, it is when I put something in my mind that I'm looking to do and I've been able to agree with Father God and he provides direction, it is at that conception point that my seed is most vulnerable, that the enemy could come and say, hey, you think that's going to happen? You really think that's going to happen? Hey, behave yourself now, man. Do, do something else. Why, why, why you want to do this thing? And it is at that point in time when the seed has now gone down that it is most vulnerable. But you and I, we need strength to conceive seed. You want, you want to be productive this year? Ask God for the strength to conceive seed. Father, I want fruit to come out of my life. But you see, when the seed goes down, I need the strength to protect it and cause it to grow. Amen, somebody? Tell anybody, say, anybody plant the seed. They in here, they in here. Say, anybody plant the seed. Amen. The second one, very quickly. Fertilizer. Tell anybody about fertilizer. I tell you, I'm keeping it real, real on a level. We, 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 we in the garden here tonight. Is that all right? We could be in the garden tonight? Right, good. So, fertilizer. Now, how many of us know that we often find ourselves in some messy situations? Yeah? But it, uh, that messy situation, for some people, it could be a stumbling block. And for other people... It could be a stepping stone. But at the end of the day, we need to understand that we oftentimes find ourselves in messy situations. Sometimes by our own doing, and then other times by persecution. So let's look at the book of James and see what happens when it's our own doing. James 1, 14. Let's go there quickly. James 1 and 14. 
And it says this. But every man, tell anybody every man. So it's not just some of we. It's not just those that come to church on a Sunday, but not on a Wednesday. Every man, amen, is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So, yeah, you're in a nice little circle. I can borrow it really quick. Four, really quick. Come, come, come. Yeah. Come fast, come fast. One more. Don't worry. I will help you get a little warm. Don't get no horrors. I will help you get a little warm. Good. Hold hands in a circle for me. <clears throat> Wonderful. Kim, let me worry for a second. <clears throat> so, this year is God's covering, right? You're under the shadow of the Almighty. He, 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 he's surrounding you. Amen. And just allow this lovely lady to pass in. Don't worry, I'm going to take care of her, right? In Jesus' name. Good. But we inside here. But how many of us know that when we accept God, we accept him and instantaneously our spirit man is reborn. But our soul, that soulish part that speaks about our will and our emotions and our intellect, it is that part of us that we need to daily allow to die. And if it is we're not careful, it is those parts within us that the devil sticks and sticks. So we, in ourselves, trying to stay under the covering. But there's a 5%, a little 5%, that is being lured on the outside. And the devil is on the outside here, looking at you, saying, how are you going? You okay? I find everything, you know, you're all right. But what about that girl? And what about the other? And soon and very soon, you're trying to ignore him. But a little part of you. So the 5% turns 7. And the 7 turns 10. And when he has your attention, guess what has happened? He just come here. You're still in the circle. Amen. You're still in the circle? Yeah, but you're flirting with? Yeah, so. Right? So soon and very soon, you start to enjoy the game. Amen? And all of a sudden, the circle getting too small. And what happened? But guess what happened? Yes? And you don't even realize... That you're outside the circle. You're outside the covering. Because why? You have been drawn away by your own loss. So sometimes we find ourselves in messy situations. Not because of the devil. Don't blame the devil so much. The devil in the corner say, oh Lord, why the devil blame me so much? Yes, he was tempted. But you were drawn away. By what? By your own loss. But you could make a decision to take that mess and make it a message because God continues to be gracious and merciful. Amen? Pay hands together for them quickly. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so, so, on one side, we are drawn away by our own loss. On the other side, it is true persecution. Tell anybody about persecution. First Peter 5 and 8. So we're still talking about fertilizer, the things that could bring mess in our lives. First Peter 5 and 8, here's what it says. Be self-controlled. Tell anybody self-control. Be self-controlled. Be alert. Because why? Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Amen. So, all of us are very familiar with the story of Joseph. Joseph, minding your own business. Minding your own business. You're a little talkative. But minding your own business. And find yourself in a pit. Amen. But God had a plan. And from the pit, he went away. Potiphar. But guess what? Mind your own business. Being, being God's children. The man doing his work, you know. The man doing his work. Devil busy. The man doing his work. All of a sudden, the woman, I get cocky. Hey. 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 Husband, where you get this one from? Hey. Right. And leave, leave the cloak in the woman's hand. Running for your life because pressure. Right. 
find himself in prison. But God is faithful. Amen, somebody. And we all know the story. From the prison into the palace. But guess what? He went through persecution. And if it is you're not careful, you might find yourself in a situation that you're under persecution. And you begin to blame God. And say, God, but why this? And God, but why? I, listen, Joseph had real opportunity to blame God, you know. The man, I mean, he's a little talkative. But you get some clothes and some kick and some cough and some chuck and end up in a pit. The man said, right, okay, restoration. Find himself in Potiphar's house. Do any, the man is a good steward. Things start to grow under the man's hand. As a matter of fact, the literal translation of Joseph, it means to increase. So the man was bringing increase. Everything that he put his hand in water to was prospering. Amen. But guess what? Persecution. Listen, we have to make a decision. I understand that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. So, Father, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to stress myself about this thing. Because if I stress myself about this thing, the doctors and them are going to make money on me. Because why? It's hypertension, it's high blood pressure, it's ulcers. No, 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 no. I ain't going down that road at all. In Jesus' name. Amen, somebody. So I'm going to make a decision to rely on God. And I'm going to also make a decision not to be drawn away and enticed. So two types of messy situations. Those that you find yourself in because you are drawn away. And those that you find yourself in because you are persecuted. On either side, my simple admonition to you is to run in into, the, into the everlasting arms of God. And rely on him for direction. Amen, somebody? Very quickly, very quickly. So, the first one was what? I ain't here only. I ain't here only. The first one was what? Till the soil. The second one was what? Plant the seed. The third one was what? Fertilize. The fourth one. You need to expose it to some sun. You need to expose it to some what? Sun. But this sun is not the S-U-N. This sun is the S-O-N. Amen, somebody. Look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. Amen, somebody. Listen, a lot of the times, have you ever found yourself in a situation that you just don't know what to do? Anybody here? Let me come on this side of the street. Anybody here? I, I, I mean, sometimes we just find ourselves in, a, in situations that we just, we just don't know what to do. So, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Hey, J E S U S. You need to run to him. Amen. L look at what Psalm 119, 130 says. Psalm 119, 130. Let's go there quickly. Psalm 119, 130. Let, let, let's see what it says. Very popular verse. So it says the okay, the unfolding. One translation says the entrance. The Bible says that the entrance of your word it gives what light. Why? Because the circumstances around us sometimes bring darkness. I can't see. I don't know what. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to go. But the entrance of God's word brings light. Malika was testifying just now, and she was saying. She's so thankful for being in God's word. Because in the Bible talks about in the last days, in these times here, if it is you're not careful, men will tie you up if it is you're not in your word. Amen. So she was talking about the importance of being in her word. But more than that, if we are to navigate the challenging circumstances that we face every single day, you're going to need God's word. You're going to need what? You're going to need God's word. So the entrance of God's word, it brings light. And it gives understanding to the simple. Some people might say, but well, Pastor Jay, how you call me simple? I, I ain't stupid. No, but guess what? If it is you're unaware of something, or you lack knowledge in a particular area, in that area you are simple. So it brings what? It brings what your way? Understanding. Amen, somebody? So tell anybody, say, neighbor, you need his son. You want to be productive, you need his son. Amen. Amen, somebody. Number five, you need water. You need what? Water. And as we all know, in several places in scripture, the Bible refers water to the, the Holy Spirit. Amen? And, and for me, I don't know about you, but for me, in this life, as a traveler along, along the road of life, one thing is of utmost importance, and that one thing is divine direction. Because life could be very frustrating if you don't get direction. You could spend 20 years scaling a wall on a ladder and you're fighting people going up that ladder it's cough and it's kick 
and the sun beating on you and birds coming and blessing you and you're going up the ladder again and sun beating and rain falling and you get to the top of the ladder and you say ah and when you check yourself the ladder leaning up against the wrong wall because why you went in your own strength and didn't seek direction but you need direction tell anybody stop listen anybody you need direction we need divine direction amen somebody john 16 13 let's turn there quickly john 16 13 we need direction you want to be productive you need direction this is not about you being bright this is not about you being logical because as i as i always tell people god does not have to make sense all god has to make is god and you might look at something and might say but that's this not making sense it does not have to make sense all it has to make is god so john 16 13 says Woo. all right good praise the lord my eyes still good i see plenty of carrots so it says this but when he the spirit of truth the truth given spirit comes he will guide tell anybody guide he will guide you into all truth the whole full truth for he will not speak his own message on his own authority but he will tell you whatever he hears from the father he will give you the message that has been given to him and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future just going right back up it says he will guide you into all truth i don't know about you but that talks about direction tell anybody direction so you need some water because the holy spirit brings divine direction and the last thing number six remove the weeds so anybody remove the weeds you need to remove the weeds very quickly mark 4 7 mark 4 7 we need to remove the weeds you don't like to mention the amplified you could give me a praise all right all right it's a big all right okay praise the lord all right good so mark 4 7 and it says and some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no fruit so you want to be productive you can't afford your seed to fall among the thorns or to be choked by the weeds and when i read down in that particular account of scripture it 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 parallels those weeds to a couple of things the cares of the world the things that has caused it to lose, lose sleep in the night the cares of the world is a, is a kind of weed the deceitfulness of riches is about getting all you can and canning all you get and saying all you can it's not about that but it's about you understanding that god is your source and the bible says that it is he god that gives us power to get wealth so if it, anytime you allow the deceitfulness of riches to come behind you it will be a weed in your life and it talks about the desire for all things so we spoke about six things very quickly this evening the first one was what till the soil the second one was what plant the seed the third one was what fertilize the fourth one was what <laughs> exposed to the son the fifth one was what water and the sixth one was what remove the weeds amen somebody can i see the hands of the people who want to be productive you want to be productive this is a, this is not just your year this is your decade you want to be productive i believe that things are going to happen once i align myself to his word once i take direction once i connect with him in faith he is going to open doors in the name of jesus the lines are going to fall for me in pleasant places in the name of jesus i have been called to be the head and not the tail above only and not beneath in the name of jesus on my job i'm going to excel in school i'm going to excel in my home i'm going to excel things are happening on my behalf in the name of jesus i'm not going to be a victim i'm going to be a victor god has called me to be more than a conqueror so i receive that tonight in the name of jesus amen somebody stand on your feet hallelujah god is a good god god is a good god we cannot be content with just going through the motions god has called us to be fruitful say amen somebody 
I can't go through life K Sarah Sarah. God does not want me to live a mediocre life. He has called me to be a king and a priest. He has called you to be above and not beneath. You need to make a decision. There is nothing as powerful as a made up mind. Are you going to make up your mind tonight? Are you going to make up your mind tonight? I don't know. I don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what is going to happen next week. I don't know what is going to happen next year. But you see tonight, once you make a decision to make up your mind tonight, I guarantee you that things are going to change. Say amen, somebody. Could I see the hands of the people who want change? You want positive change. You want godly change. You want things to happen that is going to align itself to God's word. I receive change tonight in the name of Jesus. The devil devil has no place in this situation i'm moving forward in power i'm moving forward in authority i'm gonna be productive i refuse to be lazy i refuse to be slothful i choose god and god all the time father we bless you tonight King of glory, we give you a high note of praise tonight. Father, as a people, we make a declaration from the depths of our heart that things are going to change. Our mind is going to change. Our life is going to change. Fruit is going to come out of our lives. People are going to be blessed because we connect with them. Our church is going to be better. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise for growth and increase. We speak restoration. Father, we bless you and we give you praise for doing it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together for the King of Kings. Put your hands together for the Lord of Lords. He's a good God. Amen.